Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. Some really welcome news over on CanonRumors.com. The heading of this one is, Video capabilities will be at the heart of all future Canon prosumer camera bodies. So this is something that, uh, I mean, I've been saying for a long time now that all the Canon bodies need to be 4K, and they're slowly starting to come around to it. This is not surprising to me because we've seen this with the M50, and as I've said before, I would suspect that all bodies going forward, with the exception of perhaps some of the very low-end stuff, like say like, like a T3, T4 level, not the eyes, but the lowest ones of the DSLRs and things. I think the bulk, though, of the APS-C bodies, mirrorless and DSLR, are going to have 4K uh, and better uh, video capabilities. And uh, they say, we're told a big selling point of all future Canon prosumer Canon, uh, camera bodies will be video capabilities. Internally, Canon has had a lot of discussion about improving the perceived feature set of prosumer cameras to match the likes of Sony and Panasonic. This doesn't surprise me either because, again, this is something we've talked about. This is something a lot of people have talked about. It's a lot of complaints from Can uh, on Canon in this area, in the sense that Sony and Panasonic give us so much value and features packed into the cameras, like the G85 I'm shooting with right now is a far better video camera than pretty much any Canon out there at the moment. The only thing it doesn't equal is the dual pixel AF, and I think Canon's kind of been sitting on their laurels thinking, well, nobody's got that, but you know what? Sony does now. Sony's got something very comparable, if not better. Panasonic's new update to the GH5 has shown it to be getting pretty darn good and so now you know i think canon's realized we can't we can't continue to do this we've got to give more value more features in our cameras because video has become more and more and more a component of what people want in the cameras now it also says here we consider a prosumer dslr to be anything eos 70 mark ii and up that said, we don't think Canon is anything currently we consider prosumer in the mirrorless space as much as I like the EOS M5 and M50. Feel free to disagree on the latter. So that's interesting because the M50 has been fairly well specced for 4K. It does have some, I mean, the lack of dual pixel AF at the higher end, but I would see another mirrorless body, and maybe you could argue that that would be at the 7D level. Uh, but I think the 90D and maybe that'll be where they split hairs because I think the, the coming 90D or maybe the 80D Mark II, as we just discussed, I think it's going to be a pretty solid prosumer DSLR. And I would rank that as a prosumer DSLR. And I suggest it's going to have 4K and it's going to have a lot, uh, let's say, better features than, say, like the 77D line or the Rebels below it. So I think the 90D will be well featured uh, as this article suggests. And I do expect to see a better mirrorless, something above the M50, something like a 7D level in a mirrorless. And it'll have, I think, very good video features. This is it's good to hear confirmation of what I've suspected Canon is now doing, especially when we've seen the M50 and other cameras with 4K. Um, it says here, the source claims that Canon no longer wants to lose the spec war with their future camera releases. This way of thinking is trickling down to various Canon subsidiaries around the globe to prepare for the changes coming. And then something I hadn't noticed before, but they said, as we mentioned yesterday, there's likely going to be an accelerated product development cycle over the next 18 to 24 months, and video will be central to it. So this is interesting because, as I said, the 90D or 80D Mark II, I believe, is coming relatively soon. The next level of M series is going to be something above an M50 and, and also revamps of the lower ones. All of these should be coming down the pipe. Maybe we'll even see a 6D Mark III come out. With, it, with advantages to it. It'd be interesting to see how accelerated this cycle is and what we actually get. What do you guys think? Does this, um, are you excited to hear this? Does this change whether or not you're thinking about leaving Canon for Sony as a lot of people are doing? Does this make you want to hold off, keep your Canons and just see what's coming? Or is it already too little too late? Do you think uh, they'll still won't go all in for us? I'm, I'm hoping they do. Um, and I'm excited to see what this accelerated development uh, cycle brings us. But I'd, I'd be curious to hear what you guys have to say on this front. Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Um, you know, Canon making the prosumer cameras more video featured and, uh, and not stripping features. Be more competitive with Sony and Panasonic. I think it's important. And I hope this is true. But I'm curious to see what you guys have to say. Also, good question. What do you consider to be a prosumer DSLR or even prosumer mirrorless? Where do you see that cut? Do you think the 90D or the Canon 80D Mark II or the current 80D, is that prosumer? 
or is that below prosumer? Let me know about that as well in the comments below. I'm just curious what your opinion is on that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.